I'm going to begin by just playing a few um, a few notes of, of this uh, this flute. And I've only practiced it for the sum total of like 30 minutes, but it sounds okay. And I'm, I'm looking forward to getting better at it. It's like I'm doing the whole thing, right? Just being here in the Red Rocks, playing my Native American flute, grooving with the vibes. Um, but speaking of grooving with the vibes, um, I want to talk, a, oh, let's, let me, let me do my song. So my purpose in this is not to show off my musical prowess. It's not there, or it might be, but the main thing is for us to switch our mood. Because sometimes electronics is very and uh, crisp, and I'd like us to enter into a, just change the mood into being willing to uh, participate in this healing in a very high level. I don't, it might come out reverent, I don't know what I'm going to play. The idea is not to generate a certain mood, but to generate a shift. So as I play this music, it'll be like 10 or 30 seconds of, of sound. I'd like you to ask yourself, what energy, space, and consciousness do me and my body need to be right now to heal? To heal or be healed. Okay. So let me say that again. What energy, space, and consciousness do me and my body body need to be to heal? And when you ask that question, you override all the automatic programs. Okay? And the music helps you do that. Let's Or let's experiment to see if it does. Okay? Here we go. my big beginning with art. It's a trick I learned from Rudolf Steiner. Is that it just brings the spirit of the group together, helps literally the resonance happen with music, right? We could also do it with poetry. We could also do it with things. Anyway, maybe TMI. Let's just do it. So, speaking of resonance and um, wanting to uh, do a little chit-chat just to gain resonance so we're all pondering similar ideas. Um, I was reading some new thought, uh, actually listening to it in the, in the, on my drive this morning. And, um, the idea is that, um, that when we observe something, we change it and that our bodies are set up to run on habits. And these habits you know, make it so we don't have to think so conscious. You know, we only have a certain much of, of uh, RAM for our our conscious thinking. So it allows us to learn and put things into long-term memory and just benefit from them. And what I know about healing is that healing needs to come from the habit body, not from the conscious mind, all right? And so many of the things that I do in this, um, when I lead this group, is I'm exploring and learning how to bring a group into a habit mind without it becoming a habit. Because if it's a complete habit, it's not conscious and there's nothing new that can happen and you might as well not do it if you ask me. <laughs> maybe you could do it, but um, maybe there's a very good habit that would work. But in general, we're here because we want to change something. And usually things like health and wealth and love come from an automatic part of us that um, is not in our DNA, but it's in all our epigenetics. And all these habits are um, ruling us. There's a couple things that can get us out of this rule and still not be trying too hard, because trying too hard from your conscious mind actually interferes you would say that the ego is trying to heal, but I don't know about you, but I don't know how to cure. My ego doesn't know how to cure cancer. And yet I know how to put myself into a space where I've facilitated a lot of that, 
but I don't consciously know what it is. So when I'm consciously trying to make it happen, I'm interfering. So what's this little dance between our conscious mind, our ego, our unconscious mind? It seems like you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. You know, if you overthink it, you stop it. And if you're just doing the habitual spiritual practice that you've done your whole life, it doesn't really create new change. If it does create change, then you've got a really great habit and you should do it. And one could say that I've developed certain habits of healing that, that work, but I always try to break them because I always assume that um, whatever level of integration I have, there's more. There's always more. So a couple things that, that help us use that automatic part of ourselves and still let something new in, like healing, is gratitude. So let's all be grateful that we're here, if you are grateful. Um, I'm grateful for you. Grateful to be looking at this beautiful red cliff in front of me. And uh, which you can't really see because the sun's shining in a funny way. Otherwise, I would show it to you. But um, I'll, I'll, I'll share pictures on the group later. Um, grateful for my star link that lets me go any place on the planet and um, uh, serve you. And, um, yeah. And I'm grateful for what is. So not only am I grateful for the happy, bouncy things, but I'm also grateful for my problems, because they're mine. I don't want your problems, I just want mine. I'm sort of grateful that for some reason this whole I want 100 cancer cures problem of mine or goal is um, motivates me and inspires me. It wouldn't most people. So I like I like my stuff, and I encourage you to to um, somehow embrace your stuff. I have difficulties in my life, like getting here was a hoot and a holler, as they say out west. Um, <laughs> this morning, it's like I've been trying to get here since five hours, um, and I just barely made it. So, um, you know. But I'm grateful to have that problem. I would much rather have that problem than the boredom of, of what I was doing in Long Island. So anyway, so gratitude's one. Another one is curiosity. And curiosity is a more, it's a grounded way of approaching this that doesn't turn off your ego, but doesn't put it like, it's not manufacturing the, the ideas. You're open, okay? And if you're curious about how today's session is gonna be different than all the other sessions you've done, or if you're new here today, if you're curious, like, hmm, I wonder if there's something new here, you're gonna get a lot more mileage from this than if you are busy putting it into your habit boxes, even if it's habits of thinking boxes. So it's not like smoking or eating, but it's like we have habits of thinking. So being curious, like what is new here today? Because there is always something new here today. That's the promise of every day. All right. Okay, so if you're new here, um, there's a file section on the Facebook group that explains all the uh, procedures. You can also type in questions like, why does it work this way or how does it work this way? And like 10 people will answer you. So if somebody asks that question, please help me and answer them if you know the answer. Um, and uh, yeah, so in a few minutes, uh, we're going to, um, I'm gonna guide you through a creative visualization. And we do a very similar visualization every week. And the purpose for this visualization is to create a resonant bond with the group. If we were all gathered in the same room, we would be physically more resonant than we are right now because we're all in different places right now. So, But if we th think a similar story in our mind, um, that might help the, the resonance. But if it becomes the very same old, same old visualization, it doesn't let the new in, it doesn't let the spirit in, it doesn't let the healing in. So if you're very new, you'll be very, it'll be very easy for you not to be into your old habits of this visualization because you don't have any. And if you've been um, meeting with me for 10 years, then um, 
please open yourself to something new, like more profound healing, like a completely different venue. When we, when we go to the same spot, have it, have it show itself to you in a very new way. And when you get a completely different image that you don't feel like your ego is making up, like you find yourself in a completely different part of the world than, than you would have thought, or when we go to the healing circle, the path looks a different color, or it's like it comes to you in a different way, that's an indication to me that my ego's not making it up, that I'm actually perceiving the spiritual information um, and translating it into images in my mind and that the, it's not coming from me and that's actually a, a big clue as to how to participate and then when we actually do do the um, saying of the names which is a little ceremony um, it's a very 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 detached um, um, exercise so how to be there with the names, but not try to zap them with healing energy, because your ego doesn't, that will interfere. You can om open your heart to the possibility of healing. You can notice and be curious what the healing looks like right now. So to do that, I like to think of the grace of the divine in the quantum physics kind of way. Like, it's like the space between all the molecules and all the atoms. It's... Like if you get smaller and smaller and smaller until all the particles disappear, I feel like the grace of the divine is what's left. It's love. And by... And the place to access that most powerfully is from the automatic part of us. And so you do without doing, you try without trying. You're here, but you're not. You're living in that paradoxical in-between place of caring deeply about the healing and la 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 la, I'm just here noticing what the images are. Okay, so if you're watching this on YouTube, if I publish it, I probably, maybe I will. Um, um, if you want to join us for the actual Facebook group healing, you need to join the Spirit Gate Cancer Support Facebook group. If you give me your email address, you'll get reminders. Um, and if you submit your own name and put your own email address, you'll also get a reminder every week. You won't get... Okay, yeah, you only. I think you only get reminders if you submit your email with your name um, on the form that comes out on Thursdays. All right, let's begin. <laughs> 